Hi, my name's Jeff. I'm one of the founders of Planning Pod, and we're going to take a look now at how to use the master calendar inside of your account. So we're going to go up to the main navigation bar and we're going to click on the calendar icon. There's quite a few things you can do with the calendar, so we're going to walk through this step by step. In the top here, there are buttons for adding a calendar item as well as adding a to-do. You can also print out the calendar and you can uh, print out an agenda view. Um, you can print that out or get a PDF and you can also print out the current view which will give you the calendar grid. And when you click on more, you can import a calendar from an ICS file into your planning pod calendar. You can export the calendar to an ICS file and you can also sync your planning pod calendar with another e-calendar using the subscribe to iCal feed option right there. You can also use these icons to navigate around. The double arrow lets you navigate from year to year and the single arrow lets you navigate from month to month. And if you ever get lost, you can always click on the today button to go back to today. You can also select a month view, week view, and the day view with these options right over there. There are two types of sub-calendars inside of the master calendar. The first are personal calendars, which you can add ad hoc whenever you wish. The second are event sub-calendars. Whenever you create in the events area, the system will automatically create an event sub-calendar. We're gonna add a personal calendar by clicking on the add button right here. And you can use personal calendars for things like uh, shared staff calendars or shared admin calendars or things like that. So we're going to give it a name. We're going to select a color for the calendar. And we're also going to share this calendar with a few of our contacts. So I'm going to share this with a few staff members by clicking in that box there and then selecting the people that I want to share this calendar with. So anytime myself, Shauna, or Thomas logs into our account and goes to the master calendar, each of us will be able to access this staff calendar that I'm creating right now. And it looks like I made that the same color as my other personal calendar, so I'm going to edit that and change the color. We'll make it a nice dark deep blue here. And then I'll save that. And now here is my new staff calendar that I've shared with two other people and I can add items to. As far as event sub calendars go, every time you create an, an active event inside of your account, the system will automatically create an event sub calendar for you, like it did for these three events here. I'm going to click on the events tab and I'm going to add a new event to show you how this works. So I'm gonna just create a quick event here. I'm just gonna add a quick name, and I'm going to create a date for this event, as well as a start time and an end time. And note that this actual event will also be added to this event's subcalendar. And then finally, I'm gonna scroll down and I'm going to assign a few contacts to this particular event. Any contacts that you assign to the event will also have access to the subcalendar for this event and they will be assigned to that subcalendar. So these people will receive any notifications for any calendar item that you associate with this event. And if I click on the master calendar, you will see here is the new subcalendar that has just been added for that event. And on the 23rd, you will also see the actual event itself. You can use these checkboxes to turn on and off. Uh, the sub calendars for viewing purposes. So if I've turned all of these off, you can see it turns all the items in those calendars off. And when I turn them back on, it makes those visible again. If you're just getting started with planning pod, you may want to import your current electronic calendar items into your planning pod calendar. And you can do that by uh, clicking on that import link. I'm going to go to my Google calendar which is right here, and I'm going to export this to an ICS file. I'm gonna click on calendars here, and then here is where you would export 
your Google Calendar. So I'm going to export that to a file. And now I'm going to go back to my Planning Pod account. I'm going to click on More. I'm going to click on the Import Calendar link. I am going to select a sub-calendar that I want to place all of those items into. I'm going to put them in my staff calendar, sub-calendar, and then I'm going to select that ICS file that I just downloaded from my Google Calendar. And it is right over here. And depending upon how many items are in your calendar, it may take a little while to upload these. So I'm going to click on the upload button. And now you can see here are all those items that were in that ICS file that came from my Google Calendar. And now they have been loaded into my staff calendar subcalendar. And do note that this is a one time upload. It will not sync your other calendar with your planning pod calendar. If you simply want to add a calendar item, you can click on the day that you want to add that item to, or you can click on the add calendar item button up here in the left hand corner. So the first thing we're going to do is give this particular calendar item a name. So I'm just going to say uh, meet with client and we need to discuss a few things with my client. And so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the sub calendar that I want to put this item into and I'm going to stick with putting it into our open house celebration event that we just created. You can make this an all day item or you can unclick all day and select um, the start date and end date of this calendar item as well as the start and end times. And you can either type the time in or you can use the drop down menu and find the, uh, the time that you want to input. And you can also have a calendar item repeat. So you can have it repeat uh, daily and you can select um, all of the options there. You can have it repeat weekly um, by particular days of the week. You can have it repeat monthly or yearly. We're not gonna have this particular calendar item repeat though. You can type in a location and then this way when you pull up um, the summary of the calendar item inside of the calendar, it will have a link to a map. You can also enter in a note for a calendar item right here. And the next item uh, for notifying users sharing this calendar, since I am creating a calendar item for an event, everyone who has been assigned to the event will receive this notification. So once I click on that box, all the people sharing this calendar will receive the notification that this calendar item has been created. And then you can also invite other contacts who have not been assigned to the event. And this will send them an email with a file in the email that they can then attach to their electronic calendar of choice. And finally, by clicking on this box, you can send out a reminder a certain number of minutes, hours, days, or weeks before the calendar item occurs. I'm going to put uh, two hours beforehand and you can send out an email reminder and or a text message reminder. And again, these reminders will be sent to everybody who is sharing this calendar. And once you're done, just click on the save button and this calendar item will be saved. And I'm going to scroll down here and click on the calendar item that we just created, which is right here. And it will give us an overview. And again, if you click on that location uh, link, it will pull up a map. And you can also edit the calendar item, delete it or close it by clicking on those buttons down there. Now, when you add a calendar item to an event, that item will also show up inside of the event. So we're going to click on the events tab we're going to select the event and then we're going to click on the calendar items uh, tool inside of the event and it shows that item has been added there. The calendar items will also be displayed in the daily review dashboard. So you can see right here, here is the calendar item that we just created being displayed in the daily review dashboard. Now we're going to add a to-do through our master calendar. 
Um, so we're going to go back and click on the master calendar icon in the main navigation bar. And then we're going to click on the add to do button right here. You can also add to do's through each event, but this is a good shortcut if you're inside of the calendar already. So we're going to provide a uh, title for our to do, and then we're going to assign it a due date. And this will display on that day in the calendar. And then we're going to select an event for which we're going to assign this to do to. So we're going to stick with our open house celebration event. Then we're going to assign this to do to a couple contacts. We're going to then set a reminder for the to-do. So we're going to set a day and time when we want to be reminded ahead of time about this to-do. And for to-do reminders, you can also uh, select uh, email or text reminders. And then you can also add a note to a to-do. And when we're done here, we'll click on the Save button. And when we scroll down, we'll click on the to-do that we just created right here. It'll pull up the uh, overview. And here you can mark the to-do as complete, as well as edit it, delete it, or just close this little overview thumbnail screen. And once you've created a to-do in the master calendar, it will also show up inside of the event. So we're gonna click on the events tab and go back to our event and click on the to-dos tool inside of that event. And here is that to-do item that we just added through the calendar. And this will also show up on our daily review dashboard. So um, if I click the view options for the next seven days out, right down here is the new to-do that we just created. And note that any to-dos that are created for the calendar the people assigned to those to-dos will also receive a notification the day of the to-do is due. So now we're going to take a look at how to export your planning pod calendar uh, using an ICS file. So we're gonna click on that link there. It gives us the options of which sub calendars we want to export. So I'm just gonna click on those. And then that will allow me to download an ICS file so that I can upload that to another e-calendar of my choice. Another popular feature is our sync feature or subscribe to iCal feed, which is located right here. This lets you sync one way your planning pod calendar or calendars to another electronic calendar of your choice. It could be Google, uh, Yahoo, Apple calendar or Outlook. And Using these URL feeds, you can uh, sync either all calendars or specific uh, sub-calendars inside of your planning pod account. So now I'm going to cut and paste this URL feed so I can sync my planning pod calendar to my Google calendar. So I'm going to go to my Gmail account. I'm going to click on this other calendars drop-down menu and I'm going to click add by URL. I'm going to paste that calendar feed in there from my planning pod calendar. And once I click add calendar, it may take a few minutes depending upon how many items are in your planning pod calendar, but there, there you see um, my planning pod calendar has populated into my Google calendar. Now note that this is a one-way sync. Uh, so you will be unable to sync you know, a Google calendar or an Apple calendar with planning pod, but you can sync one way from planning pod to another e-calendar. And finally, you can select uh, the date range for your calendar. So basically how far out you want your calendar to go by clicking on this option right here. Um, and I'm going to set my calendar out so that it shows all items one year before today and three years after. Note that the further out you go, um, our calendar tool will have to access more information so it may slow it down a little bit. So I do recommend uh, at having one year before and three years after, usually that's plenty of time, but you can extend it further out if you wish. Well, thanks for watching this video, but please let us know if you have additional questions.